Creations meeting. It's November 16th and it's 7.15. Uh, sorry that we're starting late, everybody. Um, let's uh, go around the room, introduce everyone. I'm Tracy McGraw, Chairman of the Parks and Recs Committee. I'm Christine McCloy, Co-Chair Member. Naomi Hawkins, School Board Representative. Bill Perzuski, Member. David Shaw, Member. Uh, John Calabro, MYA, President. And Matt Casparius, Director of Parks and Recreation. Wonderful, thank you very much. All right, we have we have a quorum. We have a quorum. I don't know that everybody was here for the last meeting. Chris, were you here? I was. Okay. Um, has everyone taken a look at the minutes? At least the people who were here at the meeting yes. in October. Yes. Okay. Do we have any changes or revisions that need to be made? I don't believe so. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept the meetings based on the people who are here? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And they would it and so be four oh two because they would abstain. Chris, okay. do me a favor, write this down. I'm having trouble with my computer. Okay. Four oh two. All right. Let me open this back up again. My apologies again. We're having technical difficulties on the computer here. Okay. There we go. So, 402, got that. Uh, new business, Matt Kasparis, uh, you're talking about Parks and Recs Committee meeting for December. All right. So, December is always kind of a hit or miss month for us. You know, we some years we meet, some years we don't. Um, at the moment, we don't necessarily have, we don't have any scout projects looming that I am aware of unless somebody comes in suddenly, you know, um, but I'm not anticipating any at this point. Um, and you know, if, if we didn't get a quorum tonight, I would have suggested meeting in December, but I don't know. What are people's thoughts? Well, if there's not a lot of things to talk about, then why have a meeting, right? So. Yeah. Works Sorry, Chris. No, I was going to go ahead. Um, I was just going to add one more thing to it. The meeting actually in December to be the third Wednesday would actually be the Wednesday right before Christmas, mm -hmm. which could also pose an issue for those who haven't been able to show tonight. Uh, so on their behalf. <laughs> yeah, works. All right. Um, do we need a vote? I don't think so. Okay. So just for the record, there will be no meeting in December, and we will have our meeting in January as planned, unless it coincides with something with town council. Right, which I don't know that schedule yet. Okay, so or, basically or we're looking. <laughs> <laughs> now we live in New Hampshire. We can handle it. Grab your uh, snowmobile. We, we need a pass the first one already. <laughs> so it'll probably be the third Wednesday. Right, which will be the 18th okay. of January. All right, and now it's to Matt for the budget. All right. Um, so when we met last month, um, obviously I hadn't gotten my budget instructions from the town. We now have those. Um, so this document in front of you is the 99% complete draft budget. Um, there'll probably be a couple of little tweaks that I'll need to make before I have to submit this to the town next week. Um, but wanted to just kind of quickly go through it. I'm not going to go through everything single line. Um, but like I said, we'll just kind of talk about, um, um, you know, a couple of minor changes here. So again, for, as we discussed last time, our budget falls into kind of three categories. It's our capital improvement projects, which again, we have one on, on the books for this coming year, um, which we talked about last month. We have kind of our taxpayer funded side, which is kind of utilities, health insurance, office supplies, park maintenance, you know, things that we don't have a whole lot of control over. Um, but it also does include like a lot of our community events. So Halloween, winter carnival, holiday parade, 4th of July, so forth. Um, and realistically, there's not a whole heck of a lot of changes there. And then we have what's called our recreation revolving fund, which is where all of our pro programs live. Um, and that's where we'll, we're looking at, you know, potentially some, some sizable changes, um, for this year. So first looking at 
the document that's labeled 13 dash parks and recreation on top. Um, again, this is the taxpayer funded budget. Um, and, and again, as we go down kind of the first thing you see highlighted is it says wages part time. Um, I actually met with the town manager this morning and human resources about wages, you know, and we talked about the challenges of trying to pay somebody, you know, hire somebody at $11 an hour in a market when everybody's paying 15 now. And fortunately, I was able to convince them that we need to go up. Um, and so we are basically going up $4 an hour across the board, um, which doesn't affect the, this side much, although it does a little bit, um, but really affects camp and, and those things, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, we have, um, looking down through our wages here, obviously, the, the weekend park attendance at Wasserman, um, you know, their rates obviously go up from last year. Um, we've also, we're trying to build into this Right now, when we do function hall rentals, a lot of times it's me coming in on, say, a Saturday and opening the building. We'd, we had originally had this plan where we put a digital combination lock on the building and, and, and say, here's your code to get in. And I even have an act option on my, on my phone and I can unlock it remotely. But we ha ended up having three events in September and October where like, okay, all you have to do is turn off the lights and unlock the crash bar. And, and shut the door and they'd go and leave and the door would be wide open. It's like, oh, you know, and so, um, and we had that happen three times. So now I'm like gun shy about unstaffed rentals. You know, um, we had another one actually where, you know, one of the rules is they can't go in the basement of the function hall. It's just, it's our furnace is down there and it's storage essentially. And not 10 minutes after I left the security cameras that are down there go off. And what are you doing down there? Oh, well, the stove wasn't working and the pilot lights out, so I was trying to fix it myself. No, you don't go fix my stove, you know. Um, he's like, oh, but I'm in HVAC and I know how to work gas. And yeah, no, you don't touch my, <laughs> you don't touch my furnace, you know. Um, so again, we're, we're, so we're building in some money trying for, um, if I can get somebody to staff said rentals so that we don't have unstaffed rentals. Um, lifeguards for the town beach, um, some of life, some of our lifeguards get paid by the tax, town taxpayers, as this particular one does, and then the rest get paid by the camp, the rest of their positions, as well as the next line, which is the waterfront director, which again, half her hours, um, his or his or her hours gets paid um, by the taxpayers, and the other half gets paid by the camp because they are technically guarding, not just for camp, you know. Um, our our um, part time year round maintenance, our seasonal maintenance. Um, all in all, this line item isn't changing at all from last year. Um, we were able to do some things a little creatively with that. And we also cut out the farmer's market attendant, which we didn't run the farmer's market this year. And at this point, we're not planning to next year. Um, someday when I have more free time than we may, but it's not going to be now. So that saved us some money there. So in the end, that line item didn't change at all from, from last year to this year. It's just kind of moving money around. Um, a lot of the, again... Retirement, health insurance, and all those kind of things, we don't have any control. They're dictated to us by the town. Um, one of the instructions we got from the town manager, though, was like they were already looking at, I think, a 21 cent increase just from all the like things that we don't control, like electricity and insurance and all that. So it was kind of like keep your budgets level as much as you can unless you absolutely, absolutely need it. So um, that's what we've attempted to do here. Um, Again, electricity all went up across the board. Um, the highlighting another usually means a change, change from what it was last year. Um, our dues and professional memberships went up because, like all organizations, they're having to charge more for things, and they're valuable organizations to belong to, and so you know need to continue um, paying for those and increasing those costs. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, recreation programs, which is again, this is all our special events, Easter, 4th of July, Halloween, so forth. Um, the top line of 13,950 didn't change at all from last year, but we've moved around money different, a little different ways, you know, spent more on some events and less on others. Just, you know, um, we were able to 
you know, for example, we, and again, we had funding in here for the farmer's market. Um, administrative costs had that run last year, which we're not doing. Um, so we were able to throw a little bit of money more into concerts this year because, again, bands are getting more and more expensive. So, but again, we we're trying to keep things level. So um, that was a good, was a success. Um, so adult, um, and Phil had asked me this earlier, but just for benefit of anybody else, um, that may not know. So there's, um, a couple of other departments that fall under parks and rec that I don't technically have administrative control over, but they fall under parks and rec because that's where the town deals with them in the budget. One of which is the adult community center, which has its own board of directors that manages rentals and maintenance and, and bills and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but they get funding for the town, um, but it just lives here in that in this uh, realm. Um, MYA is the other it is a, is a second one. Um, whoops, I passed it there. Um, and you know, which is basically subsidizing um, the various sports that MYA runs. And then the last one, um, or the third one, is the Senior Citizens Club. They get I can't even find it wherever it is here. Um, oh, there it is. Senior excursions. They get eight thousand dollars a year. Again, it kind of subsidize what the senior citizens club does. Bus trips. Um, and then lastly is like um, the Memorial Day parade. I don't run. Um, it's it's managed between the VFW and and um, the Legion. Um, and they used to take turns. I'm not sure if they do or not anymore, but. Um, they used to take turns of, of who runs it. So, um, but that again, all falls within our, our within our realm, um, as far as budgeting concerns. And then as you'll see down here under infrastructure, as we scroll down, um, our one project this year is the, um, the Wasserman Park Road, um, repairs, um, and trying to fix all of that, which we've talked about. So again, no major changes here. It's relatively level funded. Um, but did anybody have any questions about anything that's on that side of things? Question, Matt. Yeah. If you could. So I know the Wasman is open for people to have events there, like wedding receptions mm -hmm. and stuff. How's, how do you handle alcohol in a situation like that? So um, we do rent events, um, which is obviously managed by me. They um, they obviously they there's there's two fees essentially. Um, with with an event, they pay a rental fee of the building, which right now it's one hundred and seventy five dollars for a three hour block for a Merrimack resident, or three fifty for a non resident for that same three hour block. Um, with that, we make them also um, obtain um, liability insurance, like a tenant uses their liability insurance. Yeah. They can get it from our insurance carrier, and typically it's seventy-five dollars on top of the one or one seventy-five or three fifty that they're already paying. They pay the insurance company directly, and then the insurance company gives us a, an insurance certificate that basically covers if you know somebody leans a stack of chairs against the glass sliding doors and they break the wind, the door or um, um, they lean against the sink in the bathroom and knock it off the wall and suddenly the pipe breaks or, you know, yeah. anything, you know, burning the building down, you know, everything in between. Um, so that's the first piece. And then if an event, we don't have our own liquor liability insurance. Um, and so we allow alcohol only if they, um, they have to hire a bartender or a caterer. They can't just bring in their own. Their own. Um, and then the insurance or bartender or caterer has to give us their liquor insurance policy. Um, and again, that's to make sure that somebody, one, doesn't get overserved. Um, uh, but again, two, just, it, you know, controls to make sure people don't do stupid things and go out and crash their car or run into right. somebody or... Yeah you know, that kind of thing, and, and then hopefully not trash the place. And we've never had, we don't get a lot of events with alcohol, although we're starting to get more. Um, usually it's wedding receptions or that kind of thing. Um, and so far we haven't had any problems with it. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Do I need to have this microphone on? Yes. Okay. Uh, just wondering in your, in your budget, when you talk about renting that building, mm -hmm. Is the revenue included in this budget? It is not here. It, it actually, um, it, um, 
it stays in a um, a separate revolving fund, but it's not reflected here in the budget. Okay. Um, so yeah. So my only question is, you know, you have someone doing a weekend duty at about seven k. Does it make seven k roughly? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was that was to do kind of like eight different events. You know, okay. three four three hour events times eight. You know, kind yeah. of thing. Um, Last year we did almost ten thousand dollars in yeah. rentals. So good. Um, yeah. Good. Ide ideally, where we're trying to get with them is um, covering at a minimum, trying to cover kind of heat and electricity on the building for the year. We're not yeah. quite there yet, okay. mostly because the cost of heat and electricity have gone up so much in recent yeah, years. Right. But we we were there. Um, it, it used to cost us about eight grand a year to do those for those two things. And now it's like 13. So, um, but again, it's that, that balance of, we want our programs to run. And I usually take Saturday nights for our, you know, like our parents night out program, cause it runs better on Friday than, on Saturday than Friday. Um, but two, it's also a little bit selfish cause then I don't have to come in and staff it if it's on a Friday, you know, it's easier to staff it on a Friday than, uh, you know, or on a Sunday even to than it is on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we could do more, but it would cut into programming. So, you know, it's it's kind of a balancing act. Any other questions? Okay, but yeah, it was about ten grand last year. Um, so we'll move on to the other sheet now, which is the revolving fund, which again is where all of our programs live. We run about two hundred and fifty to three hundred programs a year, and on top of Kind of all the direct expenses for all of our all those programs you know salaries and and supplies and food and you know whatnot uh we have to build in costs for administrative costs um, for the department and what happens is the town charges us an annual salary allocation um, which this year is going to be fifty nine thousand one hundred and ninety one dollars and so it's basically a portion of mine in James's time kind of administering the programs, but it is also like HR's time, it's payroll's time, it's, you know, kind of um, those those kinds of things. And so I get a formula from, from finance in every fall that says, okay, this is what the number is for this year that you've got to recoup. And the way that we do that is now of those, you know, 250 or 300 classes, probably 95% of them are little classes that are, you know, you know, babysitting or um, gymnastics or um, I, I'm drawing a blank on and some of the stuff we've done, you know, painting, paint nights or, you know, whatever it happens to be. And they might make, this class might make 50 bucks. This one might make 20. This one might make a hundred. They're not big money makers for the most part. Um, so what we do is we need to make sure that we're going to cover that poll $59,000. And so what we do is we take all of the programs that are our kind of mainstay programs, the one that are going to run every year um, that are obviously larger in capacity and can, and kind of, so we, we divvy up that $59,000 to seven, basically seven programs, um, which I'm going to get into here in just a second. Um, and, and so it starts with our, um, our summer camp. Now between the three summer, we, so we run three summer camps officially. It's Natticook day camp, camp track, which is our team camp and, um, our summer stage, which is our one week theater camp between the three of those right now, they are shouldering 92% of that, that, um, $59,000. And so it gets a little tight in the budget sometimes when you're trying to, you know, cover things. Um, you know, and trying to, you know, pay better wages or whatever, because we've got this large bill that has to get paid or we're not going to have enough money to, to get through the, the, the season. Um, and then obviously the remainder is, is our other um, programs. And so as you look at the revolving fund kind of breakout sheets, it look, it, it'll show you. Um, so the first one on that list is obviously Nana Cook Day Camp. And if you scroll down, uh, let's see, where is it listed? Probably the director allocation. Yeah. Director allocation. It's kind of, where is it? Um, kind of down maybe two thirds of the way down line, line 31. Thank you. Uh, 31. So it's in this case, Dana cook is covering for next year, $35,000. 
um, on top of kind of the direct expenses of running, you know, salaries and all that kind of thing. And this budget does reflect the new wages uh, already that were approved this morning. Um, and, uh, and, and so that's that one. And then so as we move down to Camp Trek, Camp Trek is covering an additional $10,000. Um, Trek used to be fall underneath Natacook. Um, because we were only getting, you know, 20, 25 kids a week. Well, this past year, we were sold out at 40 with a waiting list. Mm -hmm. So we're going to 50 next year. And so now Trek's actually going to become its own completely separate camp. Um, and and we're now large enough that we can do that, um, which, you know, makes life a little bit easier too. So um, the, and then here's our theater camp that we run one weekend. And I don't know, and if, if you don't know this, I don't know if I've mentioned this in the past or not, but in the deed to Wasserman Park, when we took over the property, there's actually language that says once a year, we are required to do some sort of public performance at Wasserman Park. Um, now, I don't know that there's anybody from the family around that would ever question if we didn't, but we always do it anyway. So we started this theater camp, geez, probably six or seven years ago now as a way to do that. We have a, the, the drama music director from Sohegan High School that comes in for the week and bring some of her high school students and you know to work and for that one week and really nice you know they put on a whole play over the course of a week and then do a show at the end of the week it's also the reason why we do our movies in the park at Wasserman now aside from the fact that it's less easier to than dragging the stuff over here um <laughs> but it now it's a second public performance you know ah. um but a little bit of trivia for tonight um don't so look, those are the three don't main look behind the curtain what that don't look behind the curtain right um, and so then we moved down. We talked last time about the after school program, which we're looking to start. Um, I had been trying to um, make it work. I, I, one of the positions I have to fill at Natacook this year is a camp director. And so I was trying to make it work so that the, we'd hire a camp director slash after school director, and I'd have, be able to offer a full time position. We're not quite there yet. Um, we're short probably 20 grand what I need to make that happen. And, and, but I, that was part of the conversation I had this morning too. So it's not dead in the water yet, but we can make the, the budget work, you know, with a part-time person, assuming I can find said part-time person next year. But okay. I've talked to one of the concerns I had, I've heard already um, about us running an after-school program was they want to make sure we don't take business away from the other child care providers in town. And so I've talked to the, you know, there's four programs, essentially after school programs based out of, or out of Thornton's Ferry. Um, obviously there's the school schools program. Um, and then there's three others. And I've talked to two out of the three and they're at capacity right now. I suspect the fourth one is as well. Um, <laughs> but I'm waiting for that official answer to know that. that I know you haven't had an official answer, but speaking as a parent and, speaking with other parents i don't like finding after school is a stressful thing and like i don't know yeah they i th i would be surprised if they weren't all full the, well the one i'm waiting to hear from is the why i would suspect they're definitely full my kids used to go there all right. there we go so now we know so um and you know the challenge with this is the big cost in here is if you look down under after school at transportation it, for me to charter a bus, you know, we talked about the idea of, hey, we have a bus stop right at Wasserman Park, but at this point they couldn't guarantee that we'd be able to have all the kids go on the bus and get off there, just, you know, size, you know, number of kids on the bus, whatever. So we have to budget for our own bus. And the number kind of made my floor drop, my, you know, my tongue, my uh, jaw drop when I saw, you know, $36,000 for a mile and a half trip once a day, you oh, know, good. for the school year. So that's what it costs, you know. Um, so we're hoping to make it work. Um, it obviously will be a licensed uh, camp. Even though municipalities are exempt, we will still go ahead and get licensed just like we do with our summer camps. Um, um, so we will opt in to do that. So, um, so more on that coming. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll see here right now we, in the director allocations, again, here's an additional $10,000 that used to be paid out of Natta Cook and Trek, you know, that now I'm taking some of that 92% right. away. Did you have a question there? Uh, do you really want to get in the daycare business? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I've done it before. Okay. So, yes. And I, you know, and it's funny because we've got the function hall over there, which 
we get a lot of use, a fair amount of use kind of weekday mornings and then kind of like Friday nights and then Saturdays and Sundays, but weekday afternoons, it's sitting empty most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why not? And it helps us, helps the department, especially if I can eventually make this a full-time position. Quick question, um, Matt. Um, yes. Just for clarification too, since I'm typing away at the same time. So you were talking about the transportation being $36,000. You were talking about the trip being approximately a mile and a half. So are we only talking about taking kids from Thornton's Ferry? At this point, At yes. this point. And so Reed's Ferry and Mashcola would have to still work their magic in their areas. And and the, the problem would be is if I, was, if I want to expand to the other schools, it'd be another $36,000 per school because I wouldn't be able to do a shot because they'd be on the bus An too hour. long. To... <laughs> yeah. Okay. To loop from one to the other. So maybe um, the other question I'm waiting for is, um, is capacity. I think I can go to 45. Um, well, the, the, the regulations say you can have, it's like 40 square feet per child. Um, but what is, I, I need them to come look at the function hall and the three rooms in the function hall that are finished spaces and say, okay, yes, it's, so I think it's somewhere between 45 and 60. So if I can get to 60, great. And then we could look at another school. Um, but I just don't know, you know. Is there an issue with the number of adults that have to be present depending upon the number of children? First so the adult-to-child yes. ratio? Yes, there is a ratio for that as well. Okay, um, we've got, we're, we're working on all mm -hmm. of that, right? Just, and actually, I'm looking at, it's actually, it's funny because it's only a 1 to 15 ratio. Um, and we usually are, and I've budgeted for, um, like one to eight cause I'd much one to 15 is way too low. Um, having run camp for 23 years, you know, one to 15 is way too low. So, um, so that's the other piece of that. So thanks Matt. Yep. Um, so then we have school vacation week, which we've run for several years or we run most vacation weeks. Um, Unfortunately, we're not running December this week because I don't have anybody in charge and I'm on vacation, so I can't run it that week. So, um, but again, going down through again, we've got our director allocation. The other thing that we we factor into all of these line items, if you look at like line 128, is our is our software allocation. We do this for for all the things that in the programs, we have special registration software again, um, which handles all the registration and payments and all that. Um, that we have to pay for. So again, it's also divided out into those seven different programs. Um, our parents night out, which we've done the last several years um, now, um, does really well. Um, and so that's in here as well this year. And then last one, this is our wilderness medical training courses. This we used to run in-house. My, my um, medical staff at the camp used to teach this course for solo. Um, but he st he retired from teaching two years ago, and so we con it's contracted out. But it's um, because of where we are near kind of proximity to Massachusetts, especially. We run this course four or five, six times a year, and it always sells out. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not necessarily always resident, but it generates a whole lot of revenue. So um, it's a nice way to ch cover another whole nother, uh, you know. Here's Matt, another thousand dollars. Can you, can you describe what what the wilderness medical training course? Sure. So it's a yeah. sixteen day in depth. Um, when you can't call nine one one, how to deal with everything from frostbite to a broken leg to oh, wow. um, and everything in between. That's cool. Um, it's it's really a cool course. Um, but yeah, we've we run it um, four or five six times a year. Um, always sells out really, really, uh, I keep trying to do like the first responder, which is the eight day version of that, which is the certification I also hold. And we just can't quite get enough people to, you know, you need a dozen people to make the course work. And, um, I keep trying to get to convince the company to, to do like three weekends in a row or something, but which might be easier than taking off eight days, you know, right. but not quite. So, so, you know, we're looking at, you know, $569,000 worth of programs in the coming year, up from 294 last year. And a large of that obviously is the, um, you know, the $100,000 in after school program taking off. And again, it's taking that 20% or 18% of 
that salary allocations instead of going being paid by camp is now coming over mm -hmm. on this side, which makes life a little easier um, to balance the books. Okay. Um, if you know camp suddenly has a bad summer and can't you know can't uh, cover the numbers that it's supposed to be. Now we sold out last summer at camp every single week. We were basically sold out by February last yeah. year, um, and and. Our, what bid us is I couldn't get enough staff. And so we lost a bunch of the wait list, you know, at that point. Um, but then we still ended up filling just about every session. So um, now that I have this great news about the wages, I can go to the staff and say, you definitely want to come back, you know, because wouldn't it be much fun running around outside than pouring coffee, you know, or folding sweaters. Um, <laughs> so let's hope, you know. Um, so that is um where we we uh, are with the budget at this point um obviously cost of camp is going to go up the the number still being worked on a little bit um probably 280 um but we're still on the two, again we're at the bottom of the barrel which is part of why we sold out so quickly last year so this will end up putting us somewhere in the middle um but or it'll put us in the middle of where everybody was this summer I won't know until January or February where everybody else goes for next summer, you know, because right. a lot of those, like the Y doesn't tend to open registration till February or March. So, um, and we open in January. So, um, but everybody's under the same constraints. So they are. So I would expect that they're all going to go up too. I mean, I talked to Melody Pines in Manchester, their, their director the other day, um, and he was going to 325, I think. Ooh. Oh, wow. So, now, granted, his camp is, he's got a phenomenal camp. He opens registration like January 30th, and he's usually sold out for the summer by February 1st, you know, but. <laughs> Holy uh, wow. It's a nice place to be, and we're getting there, but uh, we're not quite there yet. So um, so that's what I have on on programming. Like I said, it um, after-school program really will solve a lot of problems for us, even more so if I can make it full-time. And again, that's still to be worked on in the next couple of weeks before I have to officially submit this to the the council um we um budgets will go before the council usually in mid-january i haven't seen the schedule yet of when that's going to be but usually it's somewhere mid-month um in january um with kind of that final proposal but the idea obviously so like right now you know i probably spend in the course of a year i probably spend 60 or 70 percent of my time is just dealing with camp and particularly the hiring um if we had that full-time employee that's the camp director and after school director now they and you know aside from my time james supervises camp and all those things and deals with a lot of the the day-to-day -day of those things he too can i can shed some of my workload he can actually shut some of his to this camp director. Um, and cause now they're doing, basically they have two jobs is after school and camp. Um, and they can do all the prep instead of us prepping it and saying, you know, cause right now what happens is it's been a teacher for the last second, six years. Um, so it's like, okay, it's third week of June. Okay. Here's your staff. Here's the handbooks. Here's everything. Here you go. You know, and that's essentially how the summer goes. Um, and so if they can do all that work themselves, um, it frees us up to do other things and, and expand and grow in other areas and, you know, work on, you know, like I'm still trying to get that disc golf course built, you know, which would be you know, <laughs> proposed, what, eight years ago now? Um, um, and among other things, athletic fields, you know, um, oh yeah. you know, those kinds of things. So, um, so we're, we're hopeful that, that, that we can somehow make that happen, but I, I'm probably about 20 grand short of what I need to do. And so unless I can come up with another program to make 20 grand is, you know, um, that's, you know, um, that's, that's my, that's my battle. So that's it. I have on the budget questions. No, I just have a comment. Yes. This is amazing, Matt, what you have done with all of these programs and how you've expanded them and brought in other towns and all the kids that are involved in all of this we've heard things from outside and i've been asked to tell you how wonderful the waterfront is and camp was great mm -hmm. so you're getting it from everywhere even if you're not hearing it directly from the yeah. people um and on my behalf i'd like to say thank you for everything that you've done thank you
definitely. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and, and just, I'll get, I always like to throw this statistic out. When I, so I got here, I start year 10 in, in January. When I got here, this department ran 25 programs in classes. And it was basically, it was camp, swimming lessons, tennis lessons, which we contract out now because we haven't been able to get in-house staff to run them in recent years. But, um, and then it was the, the big Halloween holiday parade and tree lighting winter carnival. And that was it. And that was all they did when I got here. And so we've kind of, we've come a long way. Yeah. We've noticed all of the volunteer requests that are yeah. coming out <laughs> through email. It's, it's a daily basis where the new requests are coming out. I got By another, the way, there's going to be some minute. more requests in a little while. So, oh, yeah. all right. All right. Um, let's move on to old business and start with an update from uh, Christine on the dog park. Hi folks. Um, dog park's doing well. Dogs are happy. Fall is here. It's the greatest weather for the dogs. They love it, of course. Um, I've only been a few times in the past month. Um, my dog is getting older, in case you didn't know that. So she's she's a little more particular what she likes and what she doesn't like. And she sometimes she just goes in and says, yeah, no. <laughs> so nice. that's okay. That's what kids do sometimes in playgrounds. So it is what it is. So we're gearing up towards... Um, snowfall obviously so everybody if you want to make sure you're picking up after your pups um there's always going to be a plea for dog uh, poop bags obviously um because you know dog poop so i think um we were trying to do a cleanup and we didn't get any interest as of yet that i've heard i know a few people went out and started cleaning up so that's good so it's really going to fall on a lot of the patrons to go ahead and start making sure they're picking up their after their dogs and any broken toys so that we can be ready for winter because you don't want to find those surprises uh, in the snow. So um, we are always looking for committee members. The committee has not really been too active as of late. Life, life takes over. So if you're interested in being part of the committee or dog park committee, please reach out via either the Facebook page, Friends of the Merrimack Dog Park, or to Matt directly, and we can try and get something coordinated and see if we can get that activated. I think that's it. I may have missed something, so you tell me. I'm just going to ask you um, if you have posted anything or if we're going to post anything to see if we can, you know, really push for some extra help to try to get things done before the next attempt at snow happens? We can certainly do another post. Absolutely. That's something that uh, we can do. So, yeah. What about the reaching out to the uh, litter crew? I mean, they helped out one time. Oh, yeah, yeah. We could. Uh, do you have a contact there? I mean, I could. I don't have a contact, but maybe we can put yeah. a look into that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah, footing-wise, I think we should be good until spring. Right, you yep. saw that, um, so we should be good. I and mean, now it's just a matter of, I think, did we put the pool away? <laughs> did we finally put the pool to bed? The so one, to speak? the one that was still in one piece. Yes. Yeah. I think okay. It got put away. Okay. And then eventually we'll we'll pull out the shovels, and um, we still need to go um, pick up some shovels and rakes. Yep. And I think we're all set for salt for now, right? For a little bit, yes. We had that donation from last year. Yep. And that was from. Who was that from? Do you remember? I don't have my notes on that. But more to come. Okay. Awesome. Um, with respect to the chips, um, I just wanted to make an overall thank you. The wood chips have stayed pretty much in place. They have. Thanks to Matt helping us out and DPW coming out and giving us that incredible parking lot and also helping block the water from running down into the park. So it's made it so it's not just dirt at the top and and chips at the bottom and um, it really posed a a huge huge change. Right. So thank you, Matt, and thank you to DPW if you're listening. We greatly appreciate that. Absolutely, the volume of water that's redirected now is amazing. Hopefully, we won't have that big puddle in the middle that freezes over on the big dog side. We're going to have ice skating parties if we do. Okay. Oh, there was doggy happens, skating. But it might be another project we can look at yeah. um, doing next year that we'll okay. be talk we talked about. Okay. What did I miss? 
You didn't miss anything. Good, yeah, We're going yeah, back yeah. to Matt. All right. All right. <laughs> I know you like to hear me, so, you know. Um, Halloween party was uh, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Um, great event. Probably had, I, I want to say we had about 800 people, um, but there were cars parked up and down Natticook Road. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a new format, and everything was kind of sh- sh- focused around between the function hall and the softball diamond. Um over there versus going down the loop road would, that we had done last year. And um, people seem to like this better. I, I don't think I've gotten any complaints about any of that. So that was nice. But we did had get, gotten complaints last year about people walking down and then having to make the trek back up the hill. And I just say, come do it. Join us in the summer. We do it five times a day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that all went well. A um, few little tweaks to make for next year, but otherwise all was good. Coming up this weekend um, is our sixth annual turkey scavenger hunt. Um, basically, you come and register. You register your family. You come join us at uh, ten o'clock on Saturday morning at at the Parks and Rec office. Um, and James and I have hidden ten turkeys, uh, turkey cutouts all over town at various <laughs> locations. Um, and everybody's handed an envelope with, with the first clue inside, and they they all all every envelope starts at a different location. And so you go off and you go find, you know, solve the, the, the riddles. And the first three families that come back um, get a 18 pound turkey for Thanksgiving. Um, we actually got, um, and we've been doing this for a lot of years, which is really nice. We actually got a sponsorship um, just last week um, for this event from Xfinity, um, who's been trying to do more in the community. Um, and they're actually funding the, the, the cost of the turkeys, but then they're also going to, working with the welfare department, they're actually going to provide the turkeys for, um, the welfare department usually provides turkeys for low-income families in the community. Um, so they're funding that the turkeys for that as well right. this year. So um, that's officially getting approved by the council tomorrow. But I'm curious, how many people have signed up for the uh, I've got 13 families at the moment. 13. We, we're in, we're usually that. somewhere between... 12 and 30. So, I mean, it just, you know, it varies. Um, What's the cutoff for registration in case? Friday. Anybody... Okay. I say Friday. Wouldn't I, would I take somebody on Saturday if they showed up in person? Yeah, probably. But <laughs> um, we always have extra clues You're good like just that. in case. But mm-hmm. um, officially the, the online piece shuts off on Friday. Um, so that's coming up Saturday and we got great weather for it. So we're good there. Um, coming up in another two and a half weeks is the 29th annual holiday parade and tree lighting on December 4th. Um, as always, the holiday parade kicks off um, from the Common Shopping Plaza near Tractor Supply Store at 3 p.m. Um, parade comes down Daniel Webster Highway to Babusick Lake Road, turns on to McDowell Wayne Street before turning into the Town Hall parking lot. Um, the theme of this year's parade is holiday movies. Um, we've got, we're up to, what did I say, 14, 14 floats at the moment. Um, wow. and hopefully we'll get more, um, in the next two weeks. Um, and people, if they're interested, can register right on our website, uh, to, to enter a float. There is no cost. It's just a, um, some creative thinking and, and, you know, decorate a car, decorate a float, whatever it happens to be. Um, and we do have a prize for the best float. So, um, and then, so following the parade is the tree lighting, which starts at, it's roughly 3.45 p.m. Um, it kind of depends on exactly when Santa arrives at the park, but usually it's somewhere around 3.45 because um, he's at the end of the parade. Um, and then we have performances from the high school marching band, Broadway Bound. Um, we have the Girl Scouts giving out cookies. We have the library giving out hot apple cider and books. And Village Medical, who is new in town or in the area, um, giving out hot chocolate. Um, and so um, I am still looking for volunteers, as always, to help with coordinating parade logistics on that Sunday from 115 to 315 at Tractor Supply, if anybody is interested and available. Um, I've got four or five at the moment, but the more I have, the easier it makes it, obviously. Um, and then moving on, we have the third annual Southern New Hampshire Tour of Lights returning obviously for its third year. Um, this was a program um, born out of um, a collaboration among rec departments in the in Southern New Hampshire. Uh, we started three years ago in 2020 um, as a way to, you know, give a free activity for families to do during COVID. 
and we kind of keep doing it because people keep asking for it. So um, this year, um, the official event has a total of 26 towns participating, um, kind of 13 in kind of South Central New Hampshire, and then another 13 kind of going from like Milford over to Keene in that, you know, Southwestern region. Um, but at this point, we are asking residents to, you know, if you decorate your house, um, for the holidays, um, to register your address with us, um, to, to, to get officially listed on the list of homes. Um, and then we create a master list by town of all in all 26 towns. And so you can get, just go on a drive and go drive from house to house. Um, they have to register. We know sometimes like, for example, there are, we know there's some really amazing houses in Merrimack, but if they don't register, they're not on the list because I want the homeowner to say, yes, I'm okay with people, with you publishing my address, you know. Um, but obviously free to participate in the event. And we do a, a um, all the towns that, that are participating um, give out a prize to, to a, a, as a raffle for the homeowners that register their homes. And so we pick one winner out, out of all the entries in Merrimack. And what we do is we say, Pick your favorite local restaurant, and we'll get you a gift certificate to that restaurant. Nice. Oh. Um, and and people have joined that, so we're we are collecting those registrations now. You have until December fifth um, to register, um, and then, like I said, we publish the official list to the public on the 9th of December. So it gives us a week to put it together, or four days to put it together. Matt, there's a, a time that the lights have to be up and they have to stay up for a period of time. Yeah, uh, basically from uh, the 9th of December through Christmas. Okay. So it's about three three weeks or so this year, um, which isn't most people, I would suspect, would have them anyway, you know. Um, and then my last event is our murder mystery dinner. It's a little ways out, but I'm going to put in a plug now because um, we are selling tickets. Uh, Saturday, February 11th is the return of the... Uh, murder mystery dinner. This will be held over at the John O'Leary Adult Community Center. Um, it's a great um, gift for the holidays, for Valentine's Day, a birthday present, just family, friends want a night out, girls night out, whatever it happens to be. Um, we hire the murder mystery company out of Boston uh, to come in and, and, and put on the show. Um, you get a catered buffet dinner from it's Celebrations Catering this year, which is a new caterer for us um for this event um and then we also have a cash bar available um for the event um as well you get your photo taken um you get dressed up it's just no fun fun night out it's the saturday before valentine's day um tickets are 58 dollars a person right now for dinner in the show but prices do go up in mid-january um because we want you to register early and as of this afternoon we've already sold about a third of the tickets so wow. um so we're excited that's look, looking good. Um, and then just the last piece, which isn't officially on the agenda, um, we finally got our function hall rentals is now available to reserve online instead of we're finally getting out of old technology paper registration forms with, with that. So that's finally, I finally had time to sit down and do that this week. So, um, and that's all I got. Wow. That's all? That's all, that's all. That's all Matt? Only three <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's a whole binder that we've been I through, know. though. Keep that in mind. Yes. <laughs> All right. Any questions from Matt on anything that he said? Okay, great. So let's go with the organization reports. Um, Maureen is obviously not here tonight. Um, I, I apologize. I, I would like to put your name on the, the minutes. What's your name, sir? Uh, yeah, John Calabro, C-A-L-A-B-R-O, MYA president. Okay. All right. So, John, you are here for Rick? Yes. I'm sitting in for Rick Rennier, yeah. Great, right. thank you. So, it's your turn. Go for it. Okay, so uh, MYA is uh, is up and running, as it always is. Uh, we're starting up our winter programs, basketball, wrestling, um, various camps and whatnot. Uh, we have our budget in to Matt or, or, or to the town. Uh, we got that in on time, and... Uh, and there's really not much more to say. Everything's running great. I will tell you that um, Rick always adds a plug in. Oh, and we can use more fields. Oh uh, yeah, we can use more fields. <laughs> <laughs> we can use a field. We're very much interested in a football slash soccer field, yep. as Matt knows. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're yep. working on it. <laughs> 
we're working on it. Um, all right, uh, school representative uh, Cameron is not here tonight. Town council, uh, Lon Woods is not here tonight. He's with his grandson doing something. Mm -hmm. So, Naomi, school board. All right, I don't have a whole lot either. Um, we're doing budget too at school board, so that's uh, that's gonna be what's <laughs> taking up the rest of our meetings for a while. Um, some dates that I wrote down somewhere. Ah, there is no school from Wednesday the 23rd, that's next week, till Friday for Thanksgiving. Um, there's also a half day the two, next Tuesday, the 22nd. Um, it's teacher workshops in the afternoon and the kids are getting off right after lunch. Okay. So no school from noon on Tuesday till the following week. And since we're not having a December meeting, I'll just go look real quick and see what the December day's off to. I'm just looking at my calendar. It is no school on the 23rd of December through the 2nd of January because that 2nd of January is a Monday. So that's the the holiday break. That's all I got. Okay. Comments from the public? We have none. No problem. Okay. Any other comments or questions or anything from anyone on the committee? Okay, great. Next meeting. Oh, yes, sir. I'm just kind of curious to ask Matt. So, so in your budget of five hundred something k, and 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 most of it includes revenues, mm -hmm. right? So, are you suggesting that the revenues cover your expense budget? The on the programming side, yes. Yeah, yeah. They're all they're all self supporting. We don't get any tax dollars for right. programs. Okay. They don't cover the taxpayer funded side the utilities the right you know that side of things right okay all right that's all thank you. i was just curious yep okay any other questions all right so next meeting is not happening in december uh looks like january 18th and again that's tentative i do recall last year we had an issue with that because town council was meeting and we decided to kind of play well, around with I, the date. I think I was scheduled to you, be at council the night of Was that of the night you were running back and forth between the O'Leary Center Could and be, here? Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Because you yeah. All right. That was crazy. Yeah. So right now tentatively it's January eighteenth. On Wednesday if anything changes, of course Matt will let us know as it gets closer. And do we have a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Phil. I'll second <laughs> we're so close. We're tied. Yeah. Give all right, you too. Give us a Jeep. <laughs> all right. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. One, two. Six, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Motion uh passed eight oh nine. Excellent. Oh, okay. Is that a cool